Don't purchase the wrong inverter. My name's Benjamin, an application engineer here at NAS, and I'm gonna help you plug into solar. In this particular install, we have two Victron 48 volt 5K multi plus two inverters wired in a split phase configuration, powering all the AC loads in this RV. Victron has a wide range of inverters that we can use in our RV applications. Victron has the Multi Plus inverter that can be used for 30 amps or even 15 amp RVs where we don't need as much power. For 50 amp RVs, we wanna go with the Multi Plus 2. The Multi Plus 2 is unique. It has the ability to accept L1 and L2 from a 50 amp service and be able to pass that through to our loads when we're connected to shore power. But when we're inverting and relying just on the inverter, the inverter has the ability to power loads on L1 and L2 using the same inverter. But for systems that we want more power, we can oftentimes stack another Victron inverter providing double the amount of power. Two 3000s would give us 6,000 watts going to our loads. But for large RVs, 6,000 watts might not cut it. So going with two Victron inverters in a split phase configuration is required. In a large powerful system, having two inverters in a split phase is important and required due to a few different limitations. One of that being the neutral wire in the AC system. It's unprotected and if we had a whole bunch of power at 120 volts, we could overload that neutral. Where when we provide the, the RV with 120 and 240, that neutral is only seeing the difference between the two inverters because power is canceled out on the neutral conductor. It's not often, but there are systems, RV systems out there that need 240 volts. For example, a large mini split that's 240. Victron split phase inverter setup is required to be able to power those 240 volt loads when we're out in the middle of nowhere or connected to shore power. Even if we're connected to 120 volt 15 amp source, the split phase Victron inverters can both shift together to match the 120 volts coming in, but also be 180 degrees out of phase, providing us the 240 for our loads. Another cool aspect about a split phase Victron system is the ability for it to connect to a wide range of 240 volt sources. Oftentimes in RV parks, the power coming in is actually a three phase system where they're providing two legs of the three phase system to each pedestal. The phase angle between the two voltage lines is 120 degrees out of phase. The Victron inverter can see that, recognize that, and shift the two output inverter output legs to be 120 to match the grid power coming in. Often, the generator installed in an RV only outputs 120 volts. And this is oftentimes a problem when we have a split phase 120, 240 volt inverter setup. And this is because only one inverter can be fed that power from the generator and the other inverter would need to be inverting always when the generator is running, oftentimes reducing the full amount of charge or utilization of that generator. To get the most out of a 120 volt pre-installed generator, we wanna step that voltage from 120 to 240 and apply that to both inverters so that both inverters can utilize the generator at the same time. To get 240 volts to the inverters, we took a Victron auto transformer, wired 120 volts into the auto transformer. Then that auto transformer outputs 240 volts that we took to the auto automatic transfer switch that then feeds the inverter system, allowing us to have both inverters charging from the batteries at the same time. Now that we've um, had an overview of wiring your generator to your inverter system, let's go a little bit deep dive into the auto transformer and how it works. 
Victron Auto Transformers can be used in a wide range of application. We can use it to step up from 120 to 240. We can step down, so from 240 to 120 volts. We can use it for neutral forming, so take 240 volts and get 120 to 240 output for 120 volt loads. And we can also use it to balance loads if we have an imbalance from L1 to L2. Victron Auto Transformer has the ability to create a neutral to ground bond that is controlled by the inverter for certain applications. Victron Auto Transformers have a few limitations regarding current that you should be aware of. First one being the amount of pass-through current. Victron has the 32 amp and the 100 amp auto transformers. For example, the 100 amp auto transformer, we can have 100 amps pass through from 120 to 120 or 240 through to 240. The other limitation is the actual transformer inside has a 32 amp limitation. So when we're stepping up, that second, that new leg cannot be pulling more than 32 amps and vice versa if we're stepping down. This RV system has an automatic transfer switch that allows us to have the generator input or the shore input connected to the inverter, one at any given time. The auxiliary relay on the automatic transfer switch is used to tell the Victron system when the generator is running and accepted. This digital relay is wired to the servo, allowing the servo to know when the generator is running, allowing us to adjust the shore limit power to match what the generator is outputting, preventing overloading or underutilization of the generator when it's running. Now that we've reviewed um, kind of some of the Victron equipment that we have here in the RV re regarding the inverters, the automatic, automatic transfer switch, the auto transformer, now let's go program the inverters, set up the digital input so that the system knows when the generator is running, and also set up automatic generator start so that the generator can start when the batteries get low. Now that we have our Victron inverters wired up and powered on, we can now program them in a split phase configuration and program them to charge and discharge our batteries. All right, I got Victron Connect here on my laptop. The inverters are plugged in together with the MK3 here to the laptop. We're going to go to our device list and we here we see the Multi Plus 2 inverters. We have two of them, but they're gonna show up in one device right now um, because they're using the same MK3 unit. We're going to click on them and we get a little notification down here saying firmware is out to date. So we're gonna first update those. We're gonna click on the little gear, enable settings. The default password for inverters is the letter Z three times. We're gonna click on the three little dots up here on the right, go to product information. And here we can update the inverter. Looks like the latest inverter firmware currently is 508. So we're gonna update the inverters to that. Just so you're aware, every time you update a Victron inverter, all the settings are wiped and replaced with factory default settings. So don't, don't update unless you're, you have the time and the knowledge to program your inverters back to where they were. All right, so it's currently updating. Let's get, give that a second. Looks like firmware has finished. So let's go continue. It's gonna take us back to the main page. Let's connect to our inverters. All right, so looks like Victron Connect has identified multiple inverters that are not configured together. Um, that's great because that's what we have here. Let's go through and set up a Victron split phase inverter setup here. So we're gonna go next. Um, Experience is required. It's the default password of three Z's. So let's type in the password, Z, Z, Z. Okay, we're gonna go next. All right, so it's searching for inverters. It's gonna find two, because I have two here. Oh, two units found. Okay, um, Victron, we can set up multiple different kind of configurations. We can parallel the two inverters 
for kind of single output, 120 volts, we uh, could do three, three phase inverters. We'd need three inverters anyways, hence the note right here. Um, we can do 120, we can do split phase 120 degrees out of phase. Um, that's not what we're doing. We're gonna want here split phase 180 degrees out of phase. We're gonna go next. All right, so we're gonna start the configuration. Um, one of the inverters is blinking. Um, that one looks like that one right for us is on phase one, L1. So we're gonna assign that one. The other inverter is going to be automatically assigned to L2. All right, the inverters are gonna reset to kind of apply these settings. So we'll give that a second. All right, now, once we finish that, we're gonna go back. It's gonna take us back to the main device list. We'll click on the inverters again. Now that we've set these inverters in a split phase configuration, we can now program the inverters to charge and discharge our batteries and a few other programs, settings like that. All right, we're going to click on one of the inverters. And here we're gonna see um, kind of some settings that we can change. Let's go to general. Here we're in the US, so we have 60 Hertz. So we're gonna leave that here. Um, AC input control is the next value. We wanna set that based on kind of the wires we're using for AC input. Here we have a 30 amps, uh, a 50 amp service. Default was 30, we're gonna set that to 50. Um, we want to make sure that current limit overruled by remote is on. This will allow a Servo GX, so a GX device or a smart VE bus, smart dongle to change the input current limit using your phone or uh, the Servo GX. We're going to leave everything else here off, like the battery monitor, that's used for applications where you just have the inverter, no DC loads, no charging sources. So we'll just leave that off. Here, we're gonna go to grid. Here we can kind of adjust some of the parameters for connecting to our AC input. This system's gonna be in a RV where we have a generator. So we're going to turn off UPS function. This just allows the generator to connect faster and um, use it a little bit faster and more often because the generator is just not always 100% output, um, uniform output. We're gonna leave everything else kind of default here. And then we're gonna go to inverter. The inverter tab, we're gonna be able to set the, the low voltage shutdown for our particular batteries. Um, you're, you're gonna wanna kind of set those based on manufacturer's recommendation. Um, lithium batteries, most time it's around kind of 11, 12 volts for shutdown. Um, so we're gonna set that, we're gonna set that to 12 here, but you're gonna wanna make sure you kind of check with your manufacturer. We're gonna also, um, we're gonna also want to kind of set when when the inverter restarts from a low voltage shutdown you want to kind of set that a little bit higher than when you shut down so that the inverter kind of has time to charge the batteries before powering the loads or we have time to charge the batteries off of solar before kind of the inverter uses that power to power the loads if you do it too close um, that can potentially cause a situation where we charge the batteries power up our loads our loads drain our batteries and we just have an endless cycle of shutting down and turning off. And then DC input low pre-alarm, that um, just alarms, notifies us when the batteries are getting low. Usually you set that to about the same value as the restart. And then we're gonna leave everything else here on this tab, kind of where it is. AES, we're gonna leave that off. We're gonna leave power assist on. We're gonna go to, we're gonna go to, oh, um, since we've made those changes, it says that the device might re, must be restarted to kind of apply those. We'll do that after we've adjusted all of our settings. We're gonna go to the charger tab. Here we can 
program the charge controller. Here, under the charger tab, we're going to tell the inverter how to charge the batteries. Um, once again, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you kind of verify these with your manufacturer. We're using lithium batteries in this application. So we're gonna scroll kind of halfway down to lithium batteries and turn this on. This kind of turns on most of the settings we need for lithium batteries, turns off settings that we don't need like equalization and temperature compensation. So doing this first kind of simplifies um, programming. And then we're going to make sure that our absorption voltage matches what the manufacturer recommends. These ones, they usually recommend 14.2 for the battery we're using. Float voltage, we're gonna set that also. This battery recommends 13.8, so we're gonna use that. We can set um, absorption interval, repeat time. Um, if you don't know, I just leave that kind of default. We're gonna to wanna to make sure our charge curve here is fixed. You're gonna to wanna to make sure equalization is off. And that's kind of all the settings that um, we have here in the charger tab. And then for certain applications, uh, Victron has kind of other settings that um, you can use. There's AC input control. This is designed for applications where you might have the grid all the time but you don't want the inverters connected to the grid at all times. So you can kind of set it at a voltage or state of charge where it connects to the grid and then disconnects when the battery is fuller um, to, to kind, of, kind of help you save on electricity costs. Um, one thing to kind of take into account with AC input control is um, when you're using this, the grid is physically disconnected internally in the inverter. So if you have a large load, if you overload the inverter, it takes time for the inverter to sync to the grid to connect. So um, if you're constantly overloading your inverter, you might wanna change these settings um, to kind of allow it to connect sooner um, before you're kind of overloading or you're hitting your low voltage shutdown. And then a um, new feature that Victron just released just recently is found here under Advanced. And that's um, called Solar and Wind Priority. This feature allows the inverter um, to not charge the batteries off of grid and let solar or wind power charge the batteries fully um, and, and kind of as a fail safe you can uh, program this where if the batteries aren't charged within seven days, you can use grid power to charge your batteries up to 100% to kind of maintain the life and get the best results out of your batteries. Um, if you want more information on this, go ahead, um, click here on more information, read about that. You can even click the links to the manual on Victron's website. Um, but it is a cool feature that they just released that we can utilize to kind of harness more solar power, put that into our batteries and use less of the grid power. Okay, that's all the settings we have here for this inverter. Cool feature we have is you're gonna need to kind of program every inverter, but Victron has the ability, you click on the three little dots here, and you can copy all the settings that we just made to this one inverter to all the other inverters. So we can click here, copy settings to all. Now it's writing it to the other inverter, so we don't need to worry about programming that one. We're done, so let's restart that. All right, that's all that we need to do to program a Victron inverter. Name's Benjamin, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. We got more videos to come. If you have any questions selecting the right Victron inverter, don't hesitate, give us a call. Chat with us on our website. Check out our learning center. We got lots of articles to help you plug into solar.